Hello there and a very warm welcome to you from the Johnson Alpine Centre where it's a busy day of alpine skiing at the Paralympic Winter Games in Pyeongchang on a warm day up in the mountains. We look forward to the giant slalom today in three categories for the men and women visually impaired sitting and standing categories. We've already seen some outstanding racing in the downhill, the Super G and the Super Combined. The men's and uh, women's slalom still to come on the program, but today it's the uh, giant slalom. Two runs per skier. The times are added up to determine our top three and consequently the medals. So we're going to start with the women's visually impaired category. We're around about a, a 45 minute drive from the Alpensia Resort, which is the uh, scene of the biathlon and cross country at these Paralympics. The uh, Johnson here is a superb facility, which is uh, bathing in uh, temperatures of up to eight degrees and it's gonna get warmer the deeper we get into the day. Just approaching 9.30 a.m. local time. And uh, we're just a few moments away from the uh, start of competition. Two runs for the women in the visually impaired category. And uh, this is the start list. So, uh, Lisa Perrine has finally got her Paralympic medal of these games. She's the lady that's charged with the task of leading out Sana and Sana. Eleanor and Chloe, the sisters from Belgium, who've already picked up medals as well. Coming after that, a couple of new names so far in this Paralympic Games. That One of them is huge, Alexandra Franceva, neutral Paralympic athlete. Hasn't competed yet in these games, but she is slalom champion from Sochi. Giant Slalom World Champion from 2015 and 2013. So what a time to enter the competition. The starting altitude of this course, 927 meters. There's a drop of 382. A course that was set by Jordi Carbonell. And a very big hello and, the flags and welcome out day number five and gates and athletes <laughs> and spectators are all ready for day five. Are you? We know we are. Okay, these ladies are always ready. And, uh, the Kasava and Subatova pairing. They're three from three so far. The women's giant slalom visually impaired event. Here at the Junction Alpine Center. And this lady here is Melissa Perrine. Her guide is Christian Geiger. Took Melissa a couple of days to get going here in Pyeongchang. There was a big expectation in Australia that this lady could really bring home a big one. Well, she's got bronze in the super combined. There's two fifth place finishes in the downhill and the super G. We're on to slalom. It's hard to look past these two. Lucky and Peering have dominated, not just here in Pyeongchang, but on the world scene for a fair few years now. But as Previous days have proved accidents can happen to even the very best. First task this morning here in the first run is to make it to the bottom and give yourself a chance in the second run. Away we go. The women's giant slalom visually impaired event. The first of 12 to tackle the course. Melissa Perrine is indeed that first athlete. You hear the guide counting the gates. Interesting differences between these guides. The headset, Bluetooth, microphone all inside the helmet of the skiers 
enabling the guide to take through their athlete safely, speedily. They're securing the medal. Three on the lookout for a second. Some events. Just combining more technical elements. It's uh, much windier, steadier courses. The speed levels dropping from the downhill events and the Super G. And this is the tuck towards the finish there. Now, first athlete on course sets 114.78. Can't win a medal in the first run. You can go out of the competition if you fail to finish. So, first task done for Melissa Perrine. Sana and Chloe Sana for Belgium. Next up, who's 20 years old, is Eleanor. And it down by her sister. At the moment, just 1.40 seconds the difference between these two, Perrine and Sana. Again, the difference in communication. B2 athletes, which is what Eleanor Sana is classified as. It's the middle ground for VI skiers. The B1s have the lowest visual acuity, B3s have the highest. And the gap here between Marie and Sana is some 3.07 seconds. Eleanor just throwing her arms up to the side. Maybe a little disgruntled, but she's into the second run at least. Naomi Iverista of Germany, 26 years old. Far outside of Perrine's opening section back to time. All of these athletes will run. Hopefully inside 120 would be their desire. Just give them a, a fighting chance after the second run. Quickly so far, 114.95. First Olympic Games experience for this team as they cross the line, not far behind, just 0.76 the difference between Hustal and Paris. The dream team from Slovakia. Marietta Fracasova, 31 years of age from Lugnava. And already blistering inside Perrine's time, 2.90. Look at the difference in speed, even visually. Just looking at the screen, if we took away the graphic, you would know that this is quicker. Natalia Subatova, the guide, leading down her very close friend. These ladies share. Absolutely everything, 4.12, but predominantly so they share success together. They dress the same on the slopes, they have exactly the same pair of moon boots off it. Let's see, Vanilla, expect to America. That is uh, Sadie Dabao. Uh, 30 years of age, he turns 31 at the end of March. He was the guide when Manella won the bronze in Paradiso at the World Championships last year. That was in the super combined event. The DNF in a 10th place, the best she's managed so far here in Pyeongchang. Manella took a, a year out after the Sochi Games. Two sixth-place finishers there. Wanted to concentrate on her studies at Dartmouth College. Here she's concentrating yeah, as she comes across the line. 
Lily Knight. And Brett Wilde. Missing out on medals in the Super Combined event. Wouldn't have gone down well with either of these two. Confidence has been an issue for Millie after winning the World Championships. A horrific crash at the end of the run there. Had another incident the next time out at the next event she competed in, and it really knocked her confidence. That's been built on. She's medalled a couple of times here already. There is a huge relief that Millie Knight can one day be a Paralympic champion. She's just 18 and she crosses the line here. 7.14 back on Forcasima. She's left herself in fourth position. Danielle Umstead and Rob Umstead. Names, yes, this is husband and wife. But decent college skier in his time. These guys have plenty of experience. This is a third games for them. They've medaled in the first two. All of those medals being bronze. Nothing to take home as a souvenir just yet from Pyeongchang. Completing the first run of two, always the challenge. Eight point five three the difference. One nineteen thirty six. Happy husband and wife. <laughs> Kelly Gallagher and Gary Smith, the guide. And the guides wear very colourful outfits that enables the skiers to pick them out and follow them down. The visual impairments range between the skiers, so some will have better light perception, others may have a better peripheral vision. Are quicker than others. Gallagher 6.50. That's a good performance from the Super G winner of Sochi. Finding form at the right time. And Jay Rib. Uh, the career skier will like. All of her compatriots be greeted to a roar at the bottom of the run. Every home athlete cheered on like they've won. Can't fault them for wanting to be here. The guide is uh, Cohen Sori. These two, of course, apart the opening ceremony as well so huge memories already from the home games for Yang Jerim time here 120 81 and indeed a big roar from the Yongshun Alpine centre crowd eighth position one of the strongest challenges to the Farkas of the crown has been Mena Fitzpatrick. At the back of an overachieving World Cup season. Mena and Jen Keo really have arrived here in Pyeongchang with an intention of showing that they are the next breed. Millie Knight 18, Mena Fitzpatrick 19. Great Britain certainly have a, an up and coming team. And four year old Keo taking down. Fitzpatrick towards the line. It's a good one as well. 3.62. It's second place for Men and Jen, as they're known on social media, on 14.45. Eva 
Gulusa from Croatia. Anna Zikman is her guy. Just 17, Ava. Sorry for on the World Cup circuit. Every time she turned up to compete, the event was called off due to the weather. Never got going in the World Cup, but they uh, refused the training wisely. Head coach of the Croatian team is Luka Dabeljak. He's actually a guide in the men's VI as well. Luka spends most of his time trying to grow para-alpine in Croatia. Well, successful people like Iva Roluza would help him do that. The learning curve is a big steep one, a bit like this mountain here. And Galuza comes towards the line. It's 128 yeah, 28. Plenty of time. Some of these athletes, the achievement isn't a medal, it's the finish. Alexandra Franceva. Lining down by Simon Pliaskin. Gold in the slalom in Pyeongchang, in that Sochi, should I say. Gold in the super combined, silver in the giant slalom, silver in the super G, bronze in the downhill. Sochi was very kind to Alexandra Franceva. Competed a couple of times at the World Cup circuit this year. And it just hasn't been going the same. For Franceva, her uh, brother competes in the men's VI events, but the Lucho Para Olympic athlete comes across the line some 16 seconds outside of top spot. Nothing like the winning Sochi formula for the Lucho Paralympic athlete, Henrietta Farkasova who has talent in abundance, seems to have a secret weapon. It's called speed, 110.83. In front of Mena Fitzpatrick, Melissa Perrine, that's the top three, but you have a second run to navigate as well before somebody will hand you one of those shiny medals. So, the women's standing Alpine skiing disciplines tend to be so Marie Jackson, Boucher from Andrea Rothfuss, France from Germany. That's happened twice in these games so far. But we did see something of an upset in the super combined with Molly Jepsen's victory as a Boucher crashed out. Rothfuss got another silver there. Sick of the side of the silver medal is Rothfuss from Germany. But we have 15 in the start gate from eight nations here in the uh, women's GS for standing athletes. So away we go. First off, Marie Boche. Gold in the downhill. That kicked off her games. Another gold followed soon after. Crashed out in the uh, super combined and those four gold medals in Sochi as well as well as uh, the 14 times she cut the podium at World Championships. So uh, she'll be confident here. This uh, a technical discipline. The Carlin tries to uh, move in between sets of uh, poles or gates. It's based at a part of this certain distance in the uh, GS. The gates are placed further apart. The idea is that just to clip the edge of those gates, find that racing line, and find the most direct route down the hill. So this is it, Mary Boche. We're going to keep a, a close eye on her times because uh, she is one of the big, big favourites here. We we'll have a second run. First up, it's a uh, one well, zero four. Mary Boche of France. Next up, Stephanie Jallen of the uh, United States. Yeah. 
So Magellan racing with an LW 9.1 sporting classification. And the factory times are an issue here as well, reflecting each athlete's individual impairment. Jaden, 10th, 5th, 8th, so far in this Paralympic Winter Games in the uh, 22 years old, and Super G, Super Combined and the uh, downhill events. So that mark of 112.04, and which is a good way outside that, Stephanie Jaden. That's probably 10 seconds indeed. So next out, Rothfuss of Germany. Three silver medals so far in the Alpine disciplines here at the uh, Johnson Alpine Centre at the Winter Games. Slalom, the Paralympic champion from uh, Sochi. But, uh, we tend to see her just on that second step of the uh, podium. And uh, home she comes. 1.25 outside of Boshe's time. It's going to be very, very interesting between those two. Though she knows what she's got to do in the uh, second run. And, uh, it's over a second she's got to make up. Plus the uh, deficit in terms of what Boshe posts second time out. Now then, Alana Ramsey has uh, been there. Two bronzes in this Paralympic game so far. Nine medals have gone to the women in the standing categories so far in these Paralympic games. And this one for just four athletes. Ramsey has uh, two of those medals. Two bronzes in the Super Combined and the Super G. She's going to be competitive it's already been a, a good upgrade on her performance from the Sochi four years ago. And in she comes to this uh, final drop down. It's going to be a decent time here for Alana Ramsey. 14 and 15, 7, 8. There, yeah, 3.74 outside the time of Boche. So, uh, just a reminder that our first skier down, setting the mark, Marie Boschet of France, also from Canada. Following Alana Ramsey comes Erin Latimer here. And the one finished so far in the Alpine competition, Gina Pratt and outside the medals in the downhill, where she was sixth. Not threatening the podium in her previous Paralympic experience. That was in Sochi four years ago. Ninth and eighth and you know, seventh in the GS, the Scarlet and the Super Combined in Russia. And the top six athlete only in the world champs. And her time is going to be a little off here. Erin Latimer, just 21 years of age, but already in her second Paralympic Winter Games. So it's all about picking up the speed, picking up the time on the second run. That's part of 10 seconds outside here, Erin Latimer. From Slovakia, this is Petra Smartsova, two bronzes in Sochi. Two silvers in the World Championship for Petra. She was third place in the giant slalom, third in the slalom in Sochi. Been racing since Torino 2006, and there was an incremental upgrade in her finishing times ever since those games in Italy 12 years ago. There's two silvers in the world as well, but they were way back in 2011, also in Italy in Sestria. Air up in the Alps, has to deal with that. Here she is, Smart Silver coming in, 116.33 here. So slots into fourth place outside the time of Boshe. Two medals so far in Pyeongchang for Molly Jepsen, bronze and gold no less. She won the women's super combined competition with bronze in the downhill. Marie Boshe crashed, crashed out of that super combined competition. And put Rothfuss into second place there as well. 
2.67 outside Boschet's competition leading time at the intermediate checkpoint. And it's going to be a bit of a slow time here, the one minute mark just as she comes into the stadium section. Here's the drop down. The left hander through the gates. And the final tuck in and surge over the line. 13 and 14 4 4. So inside, not quite 2.4 away from Boshe. Molly Jepson, third best so far for the 18 year old. Frederic Turgeon. DNF in the downhill. Canada always strong in the Alpine disciplines. Here's uh, Frederic. He comes out of the club to Skimor. Marvin Tremblant in Quebec. And really taking it to Boshe, but 4-2-2. Uh, That's the gap at the moment for Frederic Boshe. And a gold in the slalom at the 2015 Canada Winter Games in Prince George. And the right leg has been impaired since birth. She initially competed in Paralympic sports on both legs before she had a crash that broke her leg in late 2013 and then had to adapt to skiing on just one leg. Turgeon comes over the line, 119.42. That's due to her percentage of 88%, 119 there. And almost a half at Frederic Turgeon. And a Maria Rida of Germany has been saving herself for this event. Bronze medalist in the slalom at the Tavizio World Championships last year. Maria only turned 18 last month. He's another of the young breed coming through. Taking it very, very steady. Concentrating on getting down in one piece here. Born two and a half months prematurely. And the left side of her body is paralysed. But the first six months of her life in hospital with Anna Maria Reader. 112.04 is the time to look towards. It's not bad at all, this from Anna Maria. 475 outside, and that's her sixth best at present. Six to come in this women's GS for standing athletes. 17 years of age is Mel Pemble, ninth in the downhill. Began skiing at the age of just seven. Just loves it up on the mountains, loves the snow. With a sporting classification of LW92. So a range of sporting classifications here. LW9 athletes have an impairment that affects their arms and legs. Some skiers in this class have coordination issues or some loss of control over one side of their body. 12.04 is the time we're looking at matching, and that's the benchmark. Campbell yeah. yeah. somewhere off it over 10 yeah. seconds, 10.41. Yeah. 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 Campbell 10th then. Neutral yeah. Paralympic yeah. athlete down next. Yeah. 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 Fifth in the downhill. Best performance in Sochi four years ago with four in the slalom. He has got a silver medal world championship, though. Uh, performance, two bronzes in the downhill and Super G as well. Second Olympic Games for Maria. Has suffered uh, injury issues earlier in her career. Broke her right leg in a European Cup event in Austria. Best part of 10 years ago now, which is just over five seconds off the pace. Tops into seventh place though, 117 2 9. Boshe is still our competition leader from Rothbus and Molly Jepsen. 21 year old Ami Hondo comes next for Japan. It's her first Winter Paralympic Games. Sports Science University in Tokyo. 
and she re represented Japan in able-bodied rugby sevens at the 2014 World Youth Tournament in Japan. Also played 15 aside rugby at national level. Born without fingers on her left hand, Amy. And this won't be one of the quicker times that we've seen so far. Final drop down for Amy Hondo. Tucks over the line. One, two, five, one, two. Twelfth best time for Amy Hondo. Well, that's a tough place for Hondo on that one. Next up. Ali Kunkel comes next for the United States. Relative newcomer. Made a major competition debut at the World Champs last year, 10th and 7th in GS in Slalom in Tarvizio. She says she feels she can improve, she can go quicker. This is the giant slalom event though, so slightly more technical. And to take the most direct route down the mountain with the tightest and narrowest turns possible. So yeah, Kim Cook picking up some yards at the end. And 17, 8, 6, that's 5, 15 seconds away from Boshe's time at 1, 12. Eighth best for Ali Kumko. Two more to come. Penultimate rider here in the first run of the women's GS is Anastasia Koroshevo, a neutral Paralympic athlete. Her uh, factored time calculated at 93. 0.1% here. First checkpoint mark of 45.70. So she's outside that and needs to pick up speed on the second half of this course. 8 through 1 is the margin. Anastasia was there in Sochi. 13th in this event, the GS. 11th in the slalom. So it takes the fire. A little bit more strategy with the gates spaced further apart in the GS, the expanded slalom event, if you will. So Koroshava ducking in over the line now at 1, 2, 4, 6, 5. Still Boshe leads. 13th best time for Koroshava. Ilma Kazazic has been saving herself for this. Athlete from Bosnia Herzegovina. Struggled to finish the event she entered in the Winter Paralympic Games in Sochi in the slalom events, the slalom and the GS. In the World Champs, her only finish indeed was an 11th in Tarvizio last year in the slalom. Came the first woman representing Bosnia and Herzegovina to compete in alpine skiing at the Paralympic Winter Games in Sochi. So already a history maker, Ilma Kazazic, making it very steady. This is the final drop down, the opportunity to take it up at a little bit of extra speed. Fifteen. Yeah, the slowest time there for Ilma Kazazic and Bosnia Herzegovina. No great surprise to see Marie Boshe and Andrea Rothfuss leading the charge here in the women's GS. Molly Jepsen is third ahead of Alana Ramsey, those two Canadian athletes there. Nicely poised ahead of the second run. On to the women's giant slalom sitting event next then. Few surprises in the sitting events so far here in Pyeongchang. Will they continue or will we return to the norm? Anna Shapohuba there, number four, went seven events in a row without being beaten. Day four here in Pyeongchang. It was finally stopped. Alina Forster, who will go second 
is the lady to do it. First up, Laurie Stevens of the United States of America, the lady from Beverly, Massachusetts. Permanent spinal cord injury. Actually born with spina bifida. She's actually competed in para swimming and held two US records in that sport at one time. Doesn't do bad on the slopes. Gold in 2006, silver in 2010, and a brace of bronzes in Sochi. The downhill and the Super G. Never been able to find that golden moment after those performances in Torino. World champion back in 2013 as well. That in the downhill. 33-year-old. Still going. Still competing hard in the sport. The sport that she loves. The sport that she's been competing in for quite some time. Took up racing at just 15. So more than half of her life has been spent trying to get from top to bottom as quick as possible. So, Laurie Stevens over the line in 118.92. First out, first to set a time. Where will she be at the end? And then a four step was understandably delighted with yesterday's success. He's already inside Stephen's time. 22 years of age from Freiburg. This is a student nicknamed Lenny. He spent a long time in the shadow of Anna Schaffelhuber. This is her second Paralympic Games and now starting to do what Schaffel Hooper does and picking up gold. She goes into the lead. Forster 0.73 quicker than Laurie Stevens in this first run, a time of 118-19. Linda Van Impelin came here on the back of some good performances laid on in the World Cup. Perhaps thought she might be a little bit more in contention. She is in contention. 2.48 seconds quicker than Annalena Forster in these early stages. Six ski athletes in their bucket seats. Suspension underneath them. Just the singular ski at the bottom. They use outriggers in either hand. And this lady is using all of the equipment at her disposal better than anyone else so far. And in Poland in 114.87, she is 3.32 seconds ahead. And the Dutch are dancing. Shafuhuba. The great of para alpine skiing in the sit ski. She's only 25. She stated that she intends to retire at the end of these games. Dominated Sochi. Five out of five, having only got a bronze four years previous to that. Went to Russia with one medal, came home with a total tally of six. All five of the ones that she got were of the golden variety. Schaffelhuber beaten on day four. And Impelens look good here. Schaffelhuber won't be inside that time either. So Anna Schaffelhuber settles for 117.42. There are two runs in this competition. You've got to do it twice to get those titles.
Going for the Victor. Normally a competitor for the United States of America now. Competing for Switzerland, the home country of her husband Marcel. They uh, live in Park City, southeast of Salt Lake City. Plenty of ski places there. Iron Mountain, Bald Eagle Mountain. Plenty of places to practice. This lady has been there, done it, got the t shirt, and she's in contention here. Just 1.68 the difference for the great Stephanie Victor. A gold in the slalom in 06, gold in the super combined in 10. Oh, and she's delighted. So she ought to be. Nearly took out the cameraman. Heike Eder from Austria. Two Austrians in this event. Heike. Normally Heike Fritzsche, 29 years old. Now to uh, Armin Eder. The uh, human resources manager. Off the slopes. Went to the World Championships in Tovisio last year. Here, she's competing hard, 1.75. And that's third for Heike Eder of Austria. Momoka, Momoka from Japan. year old from Saitama has had a good time here in Pyeongchang. She's having a good time here in her first run. 0.5 in front of Linda van Impelen at that first time check. Roka has picked up a couple of medals already. Two bronzes and a silver in the downhill. Is she in contention again here? Three medals from three events across the line. And Muroka is now our leader. And it's not by a fraction, it's by a big gap. 1.40. This is tremendous from Momoka Muroka of Japan. There is a, a medal for the most annoyed person over the first four days of these games. I think Claudia Loesch would be part of the contention for it. Furious so far not to have got a goal. And in fact, some of her performances have led to DNFs, but she is fantastic. Her World Cup campaign this year tells you that. The fact that she is a champion and a gold medal winner twice in 2010 tells you she is of the highest caliber but desperate to return to gold winning ways. She's outside of uh, Moroka. She's outside of Linda Van Impelen, but she is third for now. The moment, uh, Schaffelhuber down in sixth place. Victoria <laughs> Pendergast of Australia decided not to run the second part of the Super Combined. Wasn't happy with the first run. Took the afternoon off to compose herself. She's a course attacker. It's Pentagas. It's the best way I can describe it. One of our skiers that just goes for it. Really throws herself into every turn. You note the six skiers don't get as close as maybe the standing athletes do to the gates. In this technical course, the last thing they want to do is get those outriggers caught up in the gate post it drags them back and to keep the speed that's the last thing they want but uh, Pendergast heading down in towards the line it's going to be outside 120 121 22 seven year old is now a kangaroo View 
Jesse Tong. Republic of China. First major competition for the 23 year old. She'll go in the slalom event as well. And he took up the sport in 2009. And the reason for that was just to challenge herself to begin with. Became national champion. For the first time last year. Big fan of uh, short track, track racing skaters as well. Wang Meng and Wu Daijing act as her heroes. Through the line, 126.75 for Liu Xitong. Xitong comes to a halt, so does the women's giant slalom sitting competition. A few different names appearing at the top of our leaderboards in sitting for the first time, but a familiar one in Momoka Muraoka. Huge opportunity for the Japanese athlete to take gold to add to her two bronze and silver so far. So now it's the turn of the men in the giant slalom here at the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. We'll start with the visually impaired category. Athletes with classification B1 to B3. Jakub Gratzko is the defending Olympic champion here. He, Miroslav Padaus, is a fellow Slovakian. And Mark Maku of Canada, a gold medal winners already in the BI disciplines in these games. 18 in the start gate from 13 nations. Well, first to go, this guy is a former downhill gold medal winner at the Paralympics. 2014 in Sochi, that added to his gold in the downhill from Vancouver. So perhaps the powers a little on the way. And he does have a, a silver in the super combined from here in Pyeongchang, a pair of fourth places as well for Jan Santakana Maistegi. First to go then of 18 here in the men's GS for visually impaired athletes. A fabulous history. Going to be guided by Miguel Galindo Garces. Preparation absolutely key here. One minute. The runs of our visually impaired athletes. Jon has fabulous history. A whole sack of medals behind him. Bronzes, silvers, and seven gold medals, no less, at world championships down the years in all disciplines, actually. Super combined, the Super G. Yes, and the downhill. His last world gold came on his uh, home course in La Molina in Spain. Three Paralympic Winter gold medals, all told, for Jon Santacana at Mace Tiki, dating all the way back to Salt Lake City in 2002, Giant Slalom B3 category. The Sporting classifications have been tweaked down the years at the Winter Paralympic Games. He's down first, Jan Sakakano, Master Green, guided by Miguel Galindo Garces here for Spain. So, nice smooth action down from Jan. Began skiing all the way back in the Well, his ambition was to get in amongst the medals. That has happened here. And now we can be confident of going again. Spain's flag bearer at the opening ceremony for Sochi four years ago. And the previous International Paralympic Committee Athlete of the Month. In recognition of performance series at the 2011 World Champs in Sochi in Italy. Three gold medals and two silvers in that event. And he will have the honour here of uh, posting a uh, benchmark time down the Jensen Hill. There's every suggestion that he's going to retire from the sport, actually, after these winter games, but the competitive spirit is so fierce in these athletes that 
you believe it when you see it, really. So Yon, guided by Miguel Galindo Garces. Here they come, over the line. First athlete down in 1-10, 4-3 here for Yon Santacana Meistegui. So, that's the time to measure yourself against. Well, we know that's got hugely strong. Gold in the Super G here. Defending Paralympic champion from Sochi four years ago in the giant slalom. Silver in the downhill. So he's added to his history and his medal haul here at Pyeongchang 2018. Been competing since Torino 2006 and there have been slow improvements ever since for Jakob Klatsko. He's still 20 years now. Another flag bearer for his nation. That happened in Sochi at the opening ceremony of those 2014 Paralympic Winter Games. Has Stargardt disease, an inherited condition that affects vision. 194 inside Santa Clara Mice takes time though. And no surprise here to see Kratzko heading up to the top of our leaderboard. For Poland. This is Maciej Kresel, guided by Anna Ogazinska. Kresel, top six up in the test, really. He's there in Vancouver. He was there in Sochi. Best winter Paralympic performance so far. Fifth in the super combined. Fifth also in the slalom four years ago in Russia. And the rest is down in the world as well. Fifth in the slalom event 2015 and last year in Tavizio in Italy. So well steered down the hill here by Anna Ogazinska. Final drop down section. This smooth movement across the track. Here he comes. 113.75 is 5.26 outside the time of Jakob Kratzko. Austria's going to log in for the next fourth down here of our 18 on the start list. In the men's visually impaired category on the GS to the Johnson Alpine Centre at Pyeongchang. So, Morgan Fair. 53. Wow. This side is Christoph Meiner. Has a, a B2 visual impairment. That equates to, uh, translates into a factor time of 88.04%. So the best part of five seconds off the pace here. Off Latsko's pace of 108.49. Just one United States skier in this particular discipline. And his name is Kevin Burton. Competed in biathlon in Sochi three years ago, 16 and 12 and seven and a half and 15 kilometer events for visually impaired athletes. Alpine skiing debut at last year's World Champs in Carvizio is seventh. And Two sixth place finishes, a fifth and a fifth in the uh, Super Combined and the Super G. So that's seventh place in the Giant Slalom. Oh, and he clips the side of that gate. And yeah, that's cost him a, a little bit of time eight, nine, right at the end. Well, he takes about ended right over on the uh, very extreme edge of that finish line Kevin Burton he's okay third best time of 112.89 by the way there even Francis he's a Paralympic athlete here. third Winter Olympic Games he's there in Sochi sixth in this event 
Francev with his guy German Agranovsky. Final drop down. 108.49 is the time to aim for. It's not a bad time at all here for Ivan. Yeah, nice done. Puts him up two in two third place. 111. 2-2 two two for Ivan Francev, the yeah, Paralympic yeah, athlete. Italy's Giacomo Bertanoli comes next. Silver in the Super G, bronze in the downhill. Very productive Winter Paralympic Games so far for Giacomo. BMF in the Super Combined. The two World Championships. He has gold in the Super Combined last year. Bronze in the Super G. to his silver at the Worlds in the giant slalom. So, 4-9 is the mark. A really quick time by Bertinoli. 3.37 inside, and that's shaking things up a bit. He has ripped down the hill here. Giacomo Bertinoli, a fabulous ski for Italy. And... Uh, Nice moment between he and his guy there, Fabrizio okay, Casal. Okay. This Pyeongchang Hill really getting the best out of him. <laughs> Malik Kubatska sets off here. And his guide is Maria. <laughs> Kubatska has the most severe visual impairment in the B1 category. <laughs> Loud speaker on the back of the guy. Well, Marek just been outside the medals in the World Champs. He's not come close, I'm afraid, so far in the Winter Paralympic Games. Been going since Torino 2006, 11th in the GS in that event. And then up to Sochi, where he was eighth in the giant slalom. Good time. 0.59 outside Bertinelli's mark. So that loud speaker, which enables better communication between the guide and the skier. Plus the athlete's goggles are blacked out. Communication is the key here. Between the six on the state area. The Toby Kova. Manek Kabatska of Slovakia. So 59.65, you see the factor time percentage way down, that reflects the uh, severity of the visual impairment here. And he's putting down a, a very good run here, Manek Kabatska. Naturally more care is taken to get our athletes safely down and in the quickest time possible. In the two B1 classifications on the start gate. We've got Zolt Balog of Hungary to come a little later. So Bertanoli's 105-12 is the leading mark so far. Kabatska has come down in a very solid time indeed here. Kabatska, 110-02, puts him third. Kubatka, 110-02, third place. That was a fabulous combination ski there between Zatovikova and Kubatska. Neutral Paralympic athlete comes next. Valery Rikozubov, guided by Evgeny Geroyev. Bronze medal in the super combined for Valery. Six in the Super G. Double gold medalist from Sochi. He won the Super Combined and Slalom events four years ago. Bronze medal in this, the GS in Sochi. ahead. 
of a world champion. Won the GS, that happened in uh, Panorama in British Columbia, 2015. Doubled up that year, won the slalom as well. And so the bronze in the La Molina World Champs five years ago in Spain. It's a slightly difficult memories of this course in Pyeongchang because the World Champs were staged here in 2009 and the, he had a bad tumble, injured his knee, couldn't continue. Resulted in surgery and missing the rest of that 2008-09 season. But uh, something of an improvement with that bronze in the super combined here. Over two seconds outside the competition leading time of 105-12 set by Giacomo Bertanoli of Italy. There's that final term, a left-hander. And down into the final dip. And over the line and into the finishing area. Five, four, four seven down. Fifth best time for Valerie with it, Kosovov. Got one of the main men next. This is Mark Maku of Canada. Gold medalist in the downhill. Got a bronze in this discipline. The giant slalom, the visually impaired athletes in Sochi. 2.19, that's a, a slow start out of the gate from Makmaku. Actually won two bronze medals in Sochi four years ago. Third in the Super G as well. But fabulous performance at last year's World Champs. One, two, three, four, five gold medals. Absolutely brilliant, 107, and we're gonna 109-44, only third best. Burton Ollie's mark still stands here. No work to do on the second run. Mac McCoo and his guide, Jack Leach. Veroslav Parauz, two Paralympic winter medals so far from these games. He's won the super combined with Veroslav. Third in the Super G, so a gold and a bronze so far. Miroslav with the B2 sporting classification. Bronze in the Super G, bronze in the Super Combined. At Vancouver 2010. Silver in the downhill in Sochi. And he's been skiing in the Winter Paralympics since Torino in 2006, where he started out as a top seven athlete only. 105-12 is the mark to nudge towards. He hasn't quite got the speed at the end. Second best though, but it's still over three seconds outside the time of Giacomo Bertanoli of Italy. Grazko, by the way, in third place here, but a mighty 3.37 seconds outside the time of Bertanoli. Patrick Hitner for the Czech Republic. A surprise if he throws the podium, an eighth, a tenth, and a sixth in the downhill. And uh, well, he's gone down, I'm afraid, here. Patrick Hetmer of the Czech Republic just couldn't keep it together. Difficult for that communication to work effectively between Patrick Hetmer and his guide, Miroslav Makala. Uh, just loses his balance there. That's a shame. And a DNF for Patrick Hetner, first of the day. From Australia, Sean Pianta. Sean only made his major debut last year in Tavizio in a pair of DNFs. We're in the giant slalom and the slalom. Good experience, he's going to be back to compete in Beijing with Sean Pianta. Broke both legs while scoring in December 2014. And that ruled him out for seven and a half months. Twelve point twelve off the pace for Sean Pianta. The guy is Jeremy O'Sullivan.
Final few turns. Just up ahead here. All this Australian partnership with Guide has to come from the same the National Olympic Committee. This is the final drop. And Piante way down. Over the finish line in 125.97. So a ranking of 12 here. Also from Australia, Patrick Hawkins. Lara Falk is Patrick's guide. Three, four seconds okay. slower than Bertinoli at that intermediate. Flag bearer for Australia. At last year's closing ceremony, the World Championships. This is the opportunity to pick up maybe a little bit of speed. Final left-hander and through the gates on the final drop. Bertinoli's time still not troubled. 116.55 and Jensen there bumps his Patrick Pianta down into 13th place. 12 for Jensen. Four left to go in this first run of the men's visually impaired giant slalom race at Tom Chance 2018. Uh, comes next for Croatia. He was there in Sochi, 14th in this event, slightly better in the slalom, 11th there, 8th in the slalom at the World Champs last year, the DNF in the giant slalom in Tavizio. In Alpine skiing now for 11 years, picked it up in Zagreb, back home. PE teacher at high school introduced him to the sport, Damir Mizdrak. In the final drop now. And he's going to be over 20 seconds, maybe 25 actually away from Bertinoli's time. 25.33 all in. So he moves into 14th place. Well, this is Zolt Balog. So a little like Marek Kabatska earlier. He has the most severe visual impairments, classified as B1. So his guy, Bencha Bocci, has a loudspeaker on his back, and the goggles are blacked out here. <laughs> 35 years of age, Zolt. Relative latecomer, he's been at two world championships in this 2015, but was there in 2013. The DNF, unfortunately, in the giant slalom there. Big improvement up to Tarbizio, where he was ninth in the GS, seventh in the slalom. So that low percentage of factor time 59.65 and we can just see the clock obviously not running at real time there that's to equalize the field yes these athletes are all visually impaired but there's still different levels of impairment within that bracket and the factor time system ensures a, a fair equalization if you will so, so balog of hungary He's away from Bertinoli's time. 12 seconds away from Bertinoli's mark. There'll be two more to come. And then this opening run will be completed. And then the men's giant slalom for visually impaired athletes here. And naturally, a lot more care is taken. To get our B1 athletes down the mountain. <laughs> Already had a, a memorable games under his flag bearer at the opening ceremony for these Winter Paralympics in Pyeongchang.
They're very controlled and careful also from the guide. Ben Shiboshi hoping Schultz follow down and over the line. 22.75 seconds away from Bertrand's 105.12. 14th place for Zolt Balog. Darius Kric with his guide Radim Nevli, the free athlete in the Czech Republic. Two Czechs involved in this competition. Fair better than Patrick, Patrick Hetman, who is our only DNS so far. There's going to be a big, big cheer, by the way, for our, our last skier down the hill from the host nation, Frank Inu. Smooth on Blitz. Got that 17 74. In his sights, 1 4 0 away, only 1 4 0. So, this is a competitive time for Darius Blitz. He's 22 years of age, Darius. He is something of a newcomer, kicking up the powder. And his first in both the slalom and the current slalom at home in international competition. In Horny Donkey last year didn't make the worlds. But they thought he would be competitive here in Pyeongchang and so it's proving. Ah, it's a shame that he lost speed on the middle section. Very competitive opening part of the course here from Tadius Klitsch. But he struggled to find the correct line through the gates and that's undermined him. So what might have been really in this first run for Tadius Klitsch. Final run home now. And uh, Tadeusz Klitz, 12.91 away, so he moves into 13th place. Sean Pianta bumped down. The last of our 18 athletes entered into the men's weekend pair drive trial now. It's Huang of Korea. The two classification athletes. 8.78 seconds away from Bertinoli's time. So he's not going to be competitive here. Second run to come, remember, in the giant slalom competitions. So we're only at the halfway mark. Wang with an insurmountable obstacle, though, in terms of making up the time. Guided down by Yu Jae Hyung. And Huang comes over at 121.23. So that gives him a 14th best mark so far. Huang Mingyu and Yu Jae Hyung, 14th. So that's the first run done and dusted for the visually impaired men in the giant slalom. And Jakob Kratzko, the overwhelming favorite in this event, only third best, 108.49. And that is 3.37 seconds outside the competition leading time of Giacomo Bertanoli. It's Miroslav Hadaus in second place. So Slovakia at two and three, Italy leading, and Mac McCrew out of the medal positions as we look forward to the second run. That will come later. Men's giant slalom standing event up next. Thomas Rocha will get us underway. 17-year-old Finn Santeri Hivari already with a Paralympic gold. Alexei Bogaev, lots of talent. Theo Himur enjoyed the first two days. ability all the way through this and lots of names to get yourself familiarized with 42 athletes taking part it's a, a mammoth day here on the mountain 
of Jungsung Alpine Center, and we're already up and running with Thomas Grocha. Oh, number 19 sliding out. Well, the 24 year old from Klagenfurt. He's first out of the gate in the men's standing. And, uh, well, yeah, takes his frustration yeah, out on the gate post, but uh, down goes Grocha. And his day five ends exceptionally quickly. This is the man from Lapin Ranta in Finland. Santeri Hiveri. Clear to everyone on the para Alpine circuit that this youngster has the talent. He's still so young, just 17 be a huge surprise to see him medal at these games but for his own progression top 10 finishes are what he would be after has an impaired range of motion you note the right arm it's tucked inside the bib number Perfectly allowed, you can't tie a knot in the bib. I'm aware of that one, but you are allowed to tuck your arm into that bib. He doesn't have a use of it, so keeps it tucked away to uh, try and make himself more aerodynamic. The first time to be set in the men's standing then, Grocha couldn't do it. Kivri can, 108-64 for the Flying Fin. Your men's giant ball, run number one, standing underway. Looks like a athlete. Had uh, people on their feet during competition in the Super Combine with his tremendous performance. And, uh, Gaev already inside the lead time. Just 20 years old is a lot of years ahead of Alexei Bugayev. Just look at the speed. He's throwing himself through these gates. 106.96. 1.68. One point six eight seconds inside. Will that be beaten? Martin Wirtz. Green skier. Another with just the use of the single pole. Just 24, Martin. Comes from uh, Weidhofen in Austria. He's a customs officer in his day to day job. Look at these athletes having to manage a day job as well as the extensive hours of training. I'm sure he's become accustomed to it. In the final three gates to go for the Here we go. Final gate. Crosses in. the he line in 110.31. It's a second Paralympic journey Austria. for Martin Wirtz. And it's third in the standing so far. And Thomas Phil is going to get the next start out here. Thomas Phil. Born on New Year's Day. There's a song in there somewhere. There's a cerebral palsy that affects the right side of his body. You note the shape of his arm during the run on the right side. Just 0 0.96 the difference in the early stages. Here to Evelyn. And there's plenty of Paralympic calibre. This is a fourth game, a silver in the slalom. 
back in Torino. He got bronze in this very event in 2006 as well. So this is the one he'll have set his sights on. 109.81, 2.85 seconds back from Bugayev. That was a quick time. Three-year-old Thomas Walsh. Impairment result of uh, Ewing sarcoma. For Thomas diagnosed in May of 2009, undergoing full radiation treatment, which ended in the middle of 2010. Made his international senior debut for the States. In 2016, in uh, Gagora, picked up a bronze on his debut in the giant slalom. This guy is quick, 1.96 the difference. Thomas Walsh in contention, he goes into third, 108.92 the time. Eastbourne resident. James Whitley, just 20. Well, it might be just 20, but it's still his second games. Born with neither hand. Doctors have constructed fingers for each limb. It's, uh, more than 30 operations. He uh, has sufficient nerves and muscles to function to make that work. Huge lover of motorsport outside of skiing. He is motoring. 105 goes past. 109, 696 is what he wants. He needs to settle for a 10981 here. James Whitley he is in fourth position. Waves. Balcher wasn't 17. He may have been hugely disappointed on day four. He saw the man that had beaten him in the opening couple of contests go out in the first round of the Super Combined, only to finish second again in the event for a third straight silver. But uh, Balcher wore a big, big smile, the Frenchman. And he's inside Bourgaillard's time. He was a world champion over the giant slalom and the slalom. This is the man to beat in the last 12 months. But at 17, it's a huge pressure and he's dealing with it wonderfully well. Oh, as I say that, he clatters the red gate. Still leads, 0.56. After Bauche is in the lead, but he might even be lucky to still be on the course. Huge smash through the gate and he knows he's survived. Will it be more than silver this time? Marcus Salka just getting off balance a moment ago. 26 years of age now, Marcus from Klagenfurt. Trains at the Olympic Training Centre there. A lot of the athletes end up living in that area. Training facilities and overall World Cup winner a couple of years back. Six months of the year, he works at an airport as a uh, baggage checker. It's a third games, two golds in Sochi. Not the same results here in Pyeongchang yet, but that's a third place finish after his run. 108.26. Robin Kush, the well-known fact that he is the nephew of Didier Kush, 1998 Olympic Winter Games silver medal winner in Nagano. That's the great family events just to lean across to an Olympic medal winner and ask for a touch of advice. Yeah, Robin Kush 
going well here himself. Second Paralympic experience for him, a 12th place in the giant slalom, his best finish. Here he goes eighth after the first run, 3.59 down. His impairment affects his right leg. The end of his first run. Team captain of Australia, Athlete representative as well. All round, nice break. 1.25 seconds the difference for Mitchell Gawley at the moment. More than capable of competing at the highest level. A world champion in his own right over the super combined last year in Tarvizio. Slamming through the red gate towards the end. That penultimate gate is taking a hammer in Gawley's time, 1.47. Bauche wounded the gate. I think Mitch Gawley's knocked it out. The inflatable kangaroo's back. This is Rimon. years old, the Canadian. Originally born in Houston, Texas. And he moved over to Western Quebec when he was just four. He's very much Canadian. Very much at contention, just 0.72. Family nicknamed him Bambi. Randomly comes with his choice of food from a menu one day. It's stuck. His impairment affects the right side of his body. A result of two strokes. And across the line, 108.23. I said he was in contention. 1.83 back. Top five, just less than two seconds apart. of Slovakia. The uh, ability to use a pole in either hand for Martin France has never allowed that to affect him. He's been racing a long old time and has come close. There's too many occasions for his liking. Four from the giant slalom in Sochi. The Paralympics fourth in the giant slalom at the World Championships last year. He must beginning to think, when is it my time? Good line through this bottom section, but he's outside the time and he's inside the top three. And this group of athletes are really starting to close up. 107.73. Top six now, less than two seconds apart. Misawa from Japan, Hiraku Misawa. Just competing in his third Paralympics. So plenty of experience with the 30 year old office worker. Loves the fact that he races against the clock. That's what inspires him every time he takes on a course. Left leg was amputated above the knee after a, a road traffic accident when he was just six years of age. Actually on the board of directors of the Japanese Para Skiing Federation. So he, sure, there's plenty of support here. So 112.06 for Masawa. That's 30. Teo Rima. What an unbelievably brilliant first two days Teo Rimeu had here in Pyeongchang. Days one and two at the Yongcheon Alpine Centre belonged to him. And he's at it again. Balche with his three silvers will have noticed the board tell him that Teo Rimeu is inside his opening time. 
It is all about two runs. Gemur fell foul on the mountain on day four. Getting a little sideways through here. Here's the section that Valche smashed his way through and Gemur holds on. Point seven zero inside after Valche. This event is hotting up. 105-7-0. Some great skiing right there from the field that we're adapting. Aaron Lundstrom, Eden's only skier in Pan Alpine. This is just the right-hand pole. And Aaron, another that uh, has shown some serious quality at times during the World Cup campaign, just 17 years of age, didn't have a great time at the World Championships last year, it has to be said, a DNF in the Super Combined, and led on to him not starting either at the Slalom or Giant Slalom, but here he is at the Paralympics, 112-19, 17, it might just be too early in his learning to be in contention, 15. Braden Luskin of Canada. Here is Mark Gate a moment to go. All about single leg skiers. All of the body weight, all of the balance dependent on one leg. Luskin using those outriggers and uh, just taking a a bit of a knock to his balance from the gate post a moment ago. If you are going to barge it down, you do need to make sure you can maintain your balance. And that's the challenge for the single leg skiers more so than the two leg skiers. Kimura's time, 105.70. This comes already outside of that, but how close can he get to the top four of five? Oh, he's absolutely rattled the final gate. He was sent wide through the penultimate gate. Not 100% sure he hasn't straddled it, but we'll soon find out if his ski has gone in between those two poles that hold the, the uh, flag. He will be out. Clearly Stanton, United States of America. 23-year-old. Lower right leg is where his impairment is at. And now in Aspen in Colorado. This will be his final ski season. Moving on to a job in Wall Street. He can bank on a good performance ten, from Jamie Stanton. 109.44. Jordan Brossin, another youngster, part of a ever-improving French team, it would appear in Para Alpine. Oh, and as I've said that, right at the top of your screen, Brossin is drifting out of the competition. That's our second DNF in the men's standing event. Some say commentators are cursed. I think it's a fact. <laughs> Big cheer at the top of the mountain as Yabayev gets away, his support team behind him, sending him on his way with a, a noise in his ear to remember. It's 28 from Dimitrov. Two seconds back in the early stages though. Bronze in Sochi on the slalom. His uh, giant slalom day was curtailed by a DNF, but certainly in medal contention come the slalom events. The silver medal winner at the World Championships in the slalom as well. So, giant slalom, maybe just a prequel of what's to come. 
570 at the time on the bottom left of your screen. Oh, your Bayef won't be inside it. He won't be inside the top 10 either. It's 111 24. Niko Pijancic. Won't want to end day five how he ended day four. And that was sliding down the side of the mountain. Pijancic staying on course this time. 42 44 through this section for Gemur. 3.13 back. Pijancic not in contention yet, but there are pockets of the course that each athlete will favour. Pierre Gemert just seem to enjoy all of it, except for the uh, penultimate gate, which everybody seems to be destroying. <laughs> Nico Priantic hasn't been very kind to it either. 4 19 the difference, though, a 109 8 9 for the Austrian. For Sean Steen of Canada from Edmonton. Now lives in uh, Spruce Grove in Alberta. Part time in the family plumbing business. Enjoys working on cars in his spare time as well. This is a third game. The third and best finish is a 12th in the Super Combine in Sochi. Good character is Kirk Schoenstein. Serves as a member of the Athletes Council on the Canadian Paralympic Committee. All with uh, Black Hill Plexus injury. Moving towards the finishing section, 110-78 as he crosses the line for Kirk Schoenstein of Canada. Roger Puig Davi, the only Andorran here. From uh, Andorra La Vela. Only 20. It's Davi, and I think just at the top of that shot, it would suggest that uh, Puig Davi is out. The second to go in that very same section here on day five. Back up top then for uh, Jolte O'Callaghan. <laughs> Celebrate his 21st birthday at the end of March, the 28th. Actually born in England. He's very much an Australian, he'll tell you that. Likes to talk about the rivalry between Australia and Great Britain in certain sports. NFL and Aussie Rules football fan is John T. And 18th at the World Championships. Quotes his idols as Nelson Mandela and Aussie cricketer Donald Bradman. Some good choices in there. Bowler's over with his performance. I think Gamora's time will stump it as it will the rest of the field as well. 0570 goes by. The plan will be greeted by a, a large section of Australian supporters, the uh, inflatable kangaroo might just have sprung a leak though, it's uh, disappeared out of sight on 1564. This is uh, Connor Hogan making a rather large international debut, no uh, world championships to speak of for uh, Connor Hogan, but uh, He's here on the grandest scale of all. Two 
70 years old, Connor. Still a student. Funny business down as Grove, Illinois. With three will palsy at just 18 months old. Right side of his body affected. 115.90. Jeffrey Stute of the Netherlands. Hasn't been wearing his normal wide smile here in Pyeongchang. Been a a struggle year for the 22 year old. Comes at the National Sports Centre in Arnhem. Picked up a couple of bronze medals at the World Championships in downhill and Super G. Hasn't been able to get near that here. And Stutt lets out a roar at the bottom. 111.31 puts him down in 18th position. What do I have to do, he says. Here's the orange cheese. Oh! Next day, the crucial neutral Paralympic athlete. Again, just the use of the right arm due to his impairment. Caused by uh, an accident whilst skiing training. Was then amputated back in 2007. A national champion in Russia in 2015. It's a huge experience for him. No world championship performances before this. So, uh, Paralympics to remember. 7.35 back though, 113.05 for Alexei Lefushin. Tyler Carter, United States of America. 24 year old. Spends his time traveling, he's uh, into his yoga. Parents got involved in, in the sport. Wants to go as fast as he can here and push for a medal. Never give up, you accomplish anything if you try. It's a motto to live by. Here he is at his second Olympic Games. He was 27th in the giant slalom in Sochi. We're looking for an improvement on that. As he comes across the line, he's 23rd. As it stands, points to the sky. Time for 15 20. This is Gakuta Koiki. Koiki from Japan, 35 year old. Works in an office when he's not competing. So, uh, competing at a decent level in paracycling. That's Koiki. A couple of nights in his first two. Outings at Paralympics, went to the 2010 Games, went to the 2014 Games, here he is in 2018. And across the line in 113.29. Chile represented here in the men's standing contest by Santiago Vega. Santiago is 20 years old. He was opening section in, already 5.89 seconds back. Competed in Sochi, the slalom and the giant slalom. Was uh, 32nd at the slalom. 
this time those combined runs nearly two and a half minutes first run here in Pyeongchang it's first outing on day five is 115.75 of Switzerland. This is a fourth games for Brugge. Medaled in 1998. Followed that in 2010. The format of power alpine skiing had vastly changed from then. By 2010, we were already into VI standing and sitting. It was a lot more diverse. Back in 98, was born missing the lower part of his right leg. Michael Brugge. And across the line, 113.01 will leave the experienced Swiss skier down in 22nd place. Spencer Wood from the USA. Who is 21 years old? Got a stroke whilst in the womb. This uh, now affects his right side of his body. And whilst he was diagnosed as a, a baby, his parents didn't tell him about it until he was age 10. That being on skis means that people can't tell I have an impairment. It's only when I walk with my lip that I am different. 10.75. Celebrates. He is a Paralympian and he shouts nice. Vide Pendotti. Italian single leg skier. Coming up to his first check. 5.24 seconds the difference. Uh, packed crowd here at the Jungshan Alpine Centre. Biggest ticket sales for a winter Paralympics ever. Dutti not in contention here, 24 year old. First Paralympic Games. Also a keen swimmer at an international level as well. Through the line he comes. 8.51 the difference. It's a time of 1.14.21. So hey. Takahashi, just 17. Another that's competing for the first major championships. Right side of his body has a actual impairment. In the use of just a singular ski pole in the left hand. Through the line, 9.73 of the difference for Takahashi. We'll rest him in 27th for now. Miroslav Ladinsky, 45 years old, comes from uh, Radek originally, now lives in Novi Khin. Former member of the military in his home nation. And, uh, 
five year old been to a couple of world championships in the last few years highest place finish of 13th in the slalom and as he crosses the line 21 48 puts him down in 30 seconds Ravurka, the second of the Czech athletes to take their place at the start gate. The five year old from Prague. He put it at the Paris Snowboard event in Sochi. Came in fifth in the snowboard cross. That event has changed drastically between Sochi and here in Pyeongchang. Uh, a change altogether for Thomas Verwerke. He moves on to two skis. Moving on to the giant slalom from the snowboard cross. 10.23 the difference for him. 115.93 puts him above his compatriot. Hilmar Hovarsson. Another single leg skier in this standing category, Rovassen from Iceland, their only representative. Oh, yeah. looks just 17. Similar to Lindstrom and to Kivari. He will grow into the sport with age. I'm sure get quicker and quicker. Not long after completing his chemotherapy for a bone cancer, his family went on a skiing trip. He fell in love. And that is what's brought him to the slopes of Pyeongchang and desperate to finish. Just somehow managing to get over. Was uh, struggling with the final three gates and just kept sneaking inside. And he'll get himself a time hasn't come up just yet. He didn't seem to miss the last game. But apparently he did. DNF for Hilmar Ulvarsson. Good effort. <laughs> Julio Andres Soko de Galde from Chile. 28 years old. Is your Galde? Doesn't have a history at major events either. Coached by Carlos Torres. And how's this for a motto? I beat cancer, I could beat anything. Here he is competing for Paralympic Games. Age nine, his left leg was amputated due to a, a bone cancer. And now he's set his time at the Paralympic Games. 125-94. Big wave to the crowd as well. This is Mehmet Cekic. Forty-eight years old. Makes him the oldest of the standing skiers. The second games for uh, Mehmet. Studied at university in France. Fluent in the language as well. It's flowing down the course nicely for his second Olympics. 28th in giant slalom in Sochi. Right down here, 35th position. 127 18 for Mehmet Jegic. He's a butcher. He's Lovro Dokic of Croatia. Another that had limited time in the World Cup circuit this year. But, uh, Lovro will make the most of his two events here at Pyeongchang, another that's coached by the charismatic Luka Dobrinic. Uh, 
But he debuted back in 2015, so he really is a fairly newcomer. He's also competed at para swimming in Croatia as well. 123.70. Athletes to take part <coughs> in Pyeongchang. Sergei Alexandrov, 36 now. He's a motivational speaker and a photographer away in the slopes. You see the use of prosthetics on both legs. The prosthetics on show. The trousers is rolled up. And a little bit of extra speed. Married, has a daughter as well. A, a large fall whilst climbing in 2009. Both his legs and suffered frostbite, leading to a double amputation. Well. 126.16 for Sergei Alexandrov here means that he is 36th best in the world as it stands. Five or four DNFs, one DNS which is a, a does not start. Theo Rimer is in the driver's seat. He's won two goals already but he has DNF in a double run competition. Rest of the field. Trying to keep up. Less than three seconds separate the top eight, which means that this competition is by no means done and dusted. The second run will become very, very important in the men's giant slalom standing competition of the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. Here's your giant slalom. You get two runs, count two, two runs to do. And that's the first one we've seen for most of the categories. We have one more first run for the city category, but after we finish with the city category, then they rewrap we take a break just to talk for you guys to reveal something to eat. Well, it's getting warmer up on the slopes of Pyeongchang. We're at the Yongsun Alpine Center, and it's on now to the men's sitting category. This particular division of the giant slalom should be one of the most entertaining of the lot, certainly the most open. Seven of the uh, nine medals in sitting events so far have gone to different skiers. And we're going to look at the uh, middle bunch, really, in terms of the uh, gold medal winners so far. Here in Campshire, Andrew Kirker and Kurt Oatway are going to be going within that bunch of 11 midway through the order. But we're going to be underway with Taiki Mori, silver medalist in the downhill. 37 on the start list here. 20 nations represented all the way down there to last man out, Sam Tate of Australia. So the sitting categories always throw up thrills and spills. This, the last first run, if you will, on the program today at the Johnson Alpine Centre. Then we're going to have a re-rack and uh, a bit of a break. 
everyone can uh, nip off, have a, a drink and a bite to eat. And then we'll see the second runs. Then we'll see the medals being awarded. So it's all setting up very, very nicely here. Big difference, obviously, in sitting skiing are the bucket seats that these athletes use. Just the singular ski at the bottom. There is a suspension device underneath that seat. The fronting and outside of them do vary. A lot of the athletes go for a, a carbon fibre covering, as you see here on the front of Josh Elliott's device. Uh, some of them are slightly higher, some of them slightly lower, and it again all comes down to the preference of the athlete using it. They'll use a device called an outrigger in either hand. It has a, a trigger switch, which enables them to flick out a mini blade or a mini ski, if you like, and assist them with their balance and their, their direction. You see the uh, course hands, the course crew, as they're called, just doing some uh, preparations. Again, there's a good way of looking at it. That's Josh Elliott and Tyler Walker of the United States of America. Tyler's aerodynamic feature on the front. Almost a, a pointy nose, if you like. Or Sikorsky as well. So uh, all of these guys, it's not a cheap sport to take part in, is six skiing. These things have lots of mechanical elements that can be broken, considering that they're going at nearly 100 kilometers an hour in various guises of para-alpine sport. Lots of flags on show, lots of nations competing for the medals here on day five. 20 nations in all here represented on the start line in the sitting category in the men's giant slalom. So we have sporting classifications ranging from 10, one to 12, two here. All sit skiers have an impairment affecting their legs. They're allocated different sport classes based on impairment in their trunk. They're naturally trunk control important for acceleration and balance during their way down the mountain. Uh, from the Netherlands, Jaren Kamschro, Nils de Langen. Kamschro has a, a gold medal so far in the Super Combined. It's getting warmer out there. We're just approaching half past 11 in the morning local time. And, uh, a little further down the slope, the course being cleared, smoothed out, tracks being ironed out here ahead of this sitting category in uh, the giant slalom for men. It's the day of the GS at the Youngson Alpine Centre. Three completed alpine skiing disciplines here at these Paralympic Winter Games in Pyeongchang. And we'll have the men's and women's downhill to come later in the programme. That'll be a thriller. So too will this. So that's Taiki Mori. Silver in the downhill. He has a sporting category of LW11. Good stability in the upper trunk, but limited control in the lower trunk and hips. So this is the category that can include skiers with lower level spinal cord injuries. Taiki Mori, 37 years of age. Been competing at the Winter Paralympic Games since 2002. And that run at the Games has yielded four medals in total. Three silvers and a bronze. First time there to be set by Taiki Mori.
good speed here by the sitting athletes. The coordination absolutely phenomenal. It's an entirely different requirement when the, the direction and balance not controlled necessarily by uh, our feet on the ground. Direction comes from the upper body. Oh, and that's a, a fall from Taiki Mori. A shame, really. Here's Giant Slalom over. And he, he barely made it halfway down. So that's a shame. A DNF for our first runner down the hill, Taiki Mori. So there'll be no further Olympic medals, I'm afraid, in this event. Loses his ski as well. This is the athlete that has been second in the giant slalom downhill and Super G, Turin, Vancouver and Sochi respectively, plus his bronze in the Super G in 2010 in Vancouver. We'll check if he's okay. But already a terrific game for him because he's racked up a, another silver in the downhill here in Pyeongchang. And he's being helped away from the course here. And Taiki Mori. A couple of uh, DNFs actually four years ago in Sochi in the super combined and the downhill. So getting himself ready to go next down. 62, second down here though in the sitting category in the GS. Marcus Vatterhofer. Won the bronze in the world champs in the giant slalom last year. World Championships. Para Alpine skiers held in Tarvizio in Italy. Batahovo who's 26 years of age. Still waiting for the green light further down the hill. After that uh, tumble from Taiki Mori, who was first down here. So, Vatterhofer, second of 37. Oh, this really is a wide open discipline. Off goes Marcus Vatterhofer. Seventh in the super combined in Tarvizio, plus that bronze. Really singing the praises of the uh, Moleski, says it gives him enormous freedom. And, uh, much prefers it on the Moleski than in his wheelchair. And Marcus got to his vertebrae during a, a motocross race back home in Austria in 2007. Had to recreate vertebrae from the hip bone, but it affected other functions. And that gives him a spinal cord impairment of LW10-1. Well, because Mori is unable to finish it will be Vatterhofer's time. That will be our, our first marker here, and that will be the tester for the rest of the field to measure themselves against. Uh, a chance for Vatterhofer to throw down a decent time. Here he comes. This is the part of the course where you can start to see the grandstand. And you can start to really feel the atmosphere of the crowds. The tribunes well populated here at the Johnson venue. Okay, Marcus Vatterhofer tucks in for the finish in 1-10-7-5. There we go, that's going to be a 1-10-7-5 for Marcus. And that will be our official time to meet as we look next to Josh. So, 
that's the time to beat. Next up is Josh Elliott. First Winter Paralympic Games for Josh. So that checkpoint of 45-3-3. And Josh has skied out there. Another DNF, I'm afraid, two in the first three down the hill. So we're going to move swiftly on to Takeshi Suzuki, who got a bronze in Vancouver in the giant slalom. Gold in the slalom in the 2014. Three winter Paralympic medals all told here. So we will be there or thereabouts for sure. Takeshi Suzuki from Japan, really good CV down the years at the Winter Paralympics for Takeshi. And a, a whole wave of results and achievements at the World Championships as well, as you may expect from someone who began skiing at the age of nine inside Vatterhofer's time. Well, already his number has gone green and it looks like we're going to have a new leader here in Takeshi Suzuki. Lost both legs after stepping off a bus and being hit by a truck. Accident occurred 21 years ago and by 0.85 we have a new leader and his name is Takeshi Suzuki. One oh nine nine zero, the new mark. Well, next down, another American in Tyler Walker will hope to finish better than the Josh Elliott managed. So one oh seven, so better than Suzuki to the tune of getting on for two seconds. Good, strong, fast run here by Tyler Walker, who's been at the Winter Paralympic Games since Turin. But he still hasn't troubled the podium. His best result was in the giant slalom, though. In his first game, since 12 years ago. Sixth in the Super G in the World Champs, and by 3.6, Tyler Walker storms into the lead. Number one spot right there, 106 3 for Tyler. Well, the United States athletes well supported as we know and uh, those fans will cheer down Andrew Kirker a little later. Igor Sikorsky comes next. Uh, he's been on the podium, he's won a silver at the World Championships. That came in the slalom last year in Tarvizio, so that's been part of his build-up. That's the peak. The Pyeongchang Winter Games outside Walker's time though by 136. But we'll try for a top three finish here, keeping it steady and maintaining that balance well. Igor Sikorsky will be 82.64 factored time. Factored time is a mechanism to equalize the uh, timings 239 is the uh, margin outside Tyler Walker's time still second best though for Poland's Igor Sigorski yes for Pedersen won the bronze in the super combined here Norwegian so he's already got a medal on his winter Paralympic debut and he's going to be quick just outside Walker's time though, 0.49. So a whisker away from half a second, slower than Tyler Walker. But this is still a quick run. And he has the ability to pick it up. There's an eighth, a seventh, a sixth, a fifth in the World Championships last year for Tyler Walker. 106.30. No, he's not got it. 1.18. He lost a little bit of time. Second, Jesper Pedersen at present. Tyler Walker still leads. Well, 
Charles Mbamba. And the United States of America. It's uh, the third games. Jasmine competed at those first games in 2010. As the first ever person to represent Serbia in the Paralympic Winter Games. Now Sarah and their three daughters are watching on. Now resides in uh, Denver, Colorado. He and the leader Tyler Walker are good buddies actually. You can often see them together giggling and laughing away. Comes towards the bottom, Bamba getting some good speed towards the end. 113, 52. Robin Robert, three bronzes from Sochi, including in this event, the giant star. So he's going to be there or thereabouts here. Tyler Walker leads from Jesper Pedersen and uh, Igor Sigorski in third place at present, but by 2.30, Rabel is slower than Tyler Walker, so needs to pick it up. Second part of the course provides that opportunity. 106.30 is the quickest time we've seen over the finish line, and he's got a further time here. Looking for a, a strong finish, Rabel. By four seconds, he's uh, down in fifth place. But there's another run to come, remember. That's, uh, that's the deal with the giant slalom. Two runs, times are totted, and then we will have our medalists. Start for uh, your crater, and uh, well, there's some concern over the German athlete. You often say that you uh, aren't really able to assess a mono skier's condition in the immediate because they yes, have to have the ski attached if it comes off they have to have it reattached and uh, sometimes they simply lay there waiting for that to happen uh, on this occasion Kater does appear to be injured the three year old in his second games the Dutch supporters here have every reason to be in good spirit. Some supporters of Linda Van Impelen, who's done well on her first run of the giant slalom event. So the one that they're cheering for is uh, Jeroen Kampstra. You see the big banner being unveiled, the big Dutch flag that says Jeroen. Here's the Langen and Jeroen Kampstra. Big hopes for the Netherlands. They go 12th and 13th in this competition, respectively. The so super combined amazing, champion, Jeroen Kampstra. Right. It's a <laughs> wonderful yeah. story having watched the Sochi Games as a 14 year old as a spectator. Three years later, he was the world champion. Four years later, he was the Paralympic champion. Can he do a double? Australia in the house. A little bit of a wait here as we have for concerns. Well, your crater, it's, uh, it's not far from the finish. Actually. We'll take a look outside of our window. He's within sight. Only five gates from the end of the run. <laughs> this is where concentration, maybe a little bit of experience comes in for some of these athletes. They'll have experienced this numerous occasions. It is. A high octane sport. And some of the crashes can lead to uh, rather serious consequences. The uh, the air ambulance was deployed on numerous occasions during Sochi. We've been blessed here in Pyeongchang and not needed 
Anyone airlifted? Uh, waiting to hear the condition of your crater at the moment. Uh, the longest delay we've had in the sit skiing event in the entire competition today, which would suggest it isn't a simple issue with the mono ski. Again, the teams at the top there. I'm sure his only job is not to hold that umbrella. But, uh, he's doing it very well. Shading Kurt Oatway. People shading themselves at the bottom. And, uh, having to try and focus and get ready to go would be Corey Peters. Thank you. But, uh, whether we are any nearer that start. He's unsure. There's still a gathering around your crater on the mountain. Staying loosened up. Just a quick neck massage. Oh, yeah, right down my spine. <laughs> Andrew Kirker <laughs> receiving the benefits of a, a quick massage from all the coaching staff. Yep. Yeah, our camera is picking out the skiers who are. Going to go down, I suppose we would call it the kind of middle bracket here, and that's, I think, where we will learn the identity of our medalist. You mentioned your own Kamschler there and Andrew Kirk, and Christoph Kuntz as well, the oh, defending Winter in. Paralympic champion in this discipline. And uh, we still wait on news of Georg Kreita and Sang Min. There, wearing bib 78, goes for the host nation. And uh, Frederic Francois, uh, double medalist in these games. Kurt Oatway, who was the gold medalist in the Super G. They're going to be skiing their first run in the not too distant future. So, nine medals in the sitting disciplines so far that have been decided at Pyeongchang 2018 have gone to seven skiers. Andrew Kirker has won two medals, a gold and a silver, and indeed Fred Francois has won his bronze and silver. So this is a very open discipline, the sitting category. And the giant slalom is always exciting because you've got two runs the timings from both runs are total and we'll go in reverse order as well in the second run uh, it creates the tension because in theory the uh, quicker guys will uh, go right at the end and uh, decide the medals all about getting uh, the most direct route down the slope in the giant slalom. The uh, tightest and narrowest turns possible and the split seconds can make all the difference. But we wait for news on Georg Kreiter, who is 10th down here of 37 athletes, 20 nations. Kreiter will be followed down much later by uh, Thomas Nolte. But I'm afraid Kreiter is our third DNF. We've seen Josh Elliott and first down. Taki Mori unable to finish the course here, unable to finish their first runs. And there is a little bit of consternation around the situation of Kreiter. You can see the stretcher being positioned near him. Yeah, plenty of Japanese support here for involved in this competition. Not so good for Taiki Mori, but Takeshi Suzuki is here for Japan, Akira Kano as well. Getting a, a close-up look of the machinery involved here for the sit skiers. It's a complex device. Uh, the bottom of it acts as uh, a ski boot would. It clips into place onto the ski. 
in the centre of that contraption. You can see a, a suspension device you can find on a, a motorbike or a motocross vehicle. That, uh, that acts as the spring on the extremely bumpy journey for these sit skiers. It's attached to the bottom of a, be a carbon fibre or plastic seating. The athletes get themselves into, they're then strapped in. And, uh, I haven't met a sit skier yet that tells me it's comfortable. But, uh, suffer for your art, I believe the saying is. Uh, coaches looking on, and uh, just by the way they're dressed, oh, yeah. gives oh, you a sense oh, of uh, the weather here at the Zhongshan Alpine Centre on day five. Stark contrast to day one, we've got a heat haze out on the course. Tyler Walker is the one to uh, withstand the heat the best so far. Yes, but Pedersen at 18 is already having an enjoyable debut Winter Games. He sits in second position. Or Sikorsky picked up his first ever World Cup success this year round. So another that's finding a little bit of form. The added pressure of some quality names still yet to come as the kids in the stands make their own entertainment. And sadly, this is the reason for our delay. Your Kreiter came out of the gate as our 10th starter. Sadly, has uh, injured himself during the run. Some big names left in the world of sit skiing. Jeroen Kampser, super combined Paralympic champion. He's a world champion on numerous occasions back in Tarizio last year. Mr. Lang and Andrew Kirker, you can just see in the background to the left, the United States of America. He's got a gold here as well. Francois was uh, the 41 year old sandwich between two 18 year olds in the super combined on day four. He will fancy his chances again. Kurt Oatway of Canada, look out for bib number 82 for Kurt Oatway. And we might have some movement for your Kreiter here, but uh, as pointed out, the stretcher which can be skied down, being manoeuvred into position. And, uh, no athlete wants to be taken from the mountain. But uh, your Kreiter may not have a choice. We've seen a few facial injuries here. Pyong Chang, bruises from falls but nothing too serious and that does actually give us a change from what happened in Sochi there were some real hefty falls for athletes during the games in 2014 changes are made with the provisions put in place but, uh, here Kreiter looks like he being ready to move. It's Corey Peters, by the way, in the start gate next to go for New Zealand, but he will be anxious to learn of the welfare of his rival, in, uh, Georg Kreiter. So, our camera picking out those in particular following Germany. Johan Tabale there. Bib 83. It'll be a while before he is pushed out of the gates. Fred Francois, the French delegation, just waiting. Wondering. Of course, both athletes and technical support staff are constant communication with those further down the hill. They'll be kept abreast of what's happening as we wait to continue this first run. 
Kirk in the giant challenge yeah, for the sitting athletes, the sit ski athletes here at the Paralympic Winter Games. And Gail Kreiter is being taken from the uh, scene. He crashed out, unable to finish his first run here. Let's go, mate. Let's go, Corey. We're going to return to racing now with Peter Peters. Ready for the medal round his neck from these Winter Paralympic Games. That in the downhill, in which he was third, so bronze there. But crucially, he was a silver medalist in the giant slalom in Sochi. Double world champion as well. Also has three silvers in 2015 and 2017 at the Para Alpine World Championships in Canada in 2015 and then last year in Italy, Tavizio. Corey goes to Colorado in the United States to train. Qualified cabinet maker and boat builder. Uh, always nice to have something to fall back on, as they say. One minute. The focus here is on this first run in the GS in the Winter Paralympics. Already a Winter Paralympic legend in the land of the Kiwis, New Zealand. Flag bearer at the closing the ceremony in Sochi and then uh, the next time round, opening ceremony here in Pyeongchang. He was carrying the flag as well for New Zealand. <laughs> Skier number 11 then of 37 here in the first run of the men's giant slalom for set skiers. And it's Corey Peters. Okay. And he goes, the mark that he's measuring himself against is the 106.30 set by Tyler Walker of the United States. That is 1.18 better than Jesper Pedersen's time. And third place at the moment, Igor Sikorsky. He's 2.39 back. So just by 0.71, Corey Peters is outside Tyler Walker's mark. Riding the bumps. And here's Corey. Through the gates. You have to go through. We're allowed to clip them. Uh, often these athletes do, trying to find the fastest line down the hill. 2.45, so he's uh, lost a little bit of time. He'd love to see that number go green, but it's very much red here for Corey Peters. And he's already playing catch-up in this competition, but he does have another run to come. It's Corey Peters now of New Zealand. Final drop down. 106.30, he's not going to be up to that here. Finally the dive in and one 11.07, 4.77 back. And Corey Peters moves into seventh place. So Yaron Kamstra, the reigning world champion. What a progression. Well. He uh, came from his armchair, really. 0.33. Tyler Walker threatening uh, there to be bumped out of top spot here by Yeren Kamsler. One of the emerging stars, one of the emerging heroes. Three golds at the World Championships last year. It was a heck of an announcement on the elite stage here for this winter. Paralympic athlete, 106.30, he looks like he's got it, and he has. Yellen Kamstra by 0.26, he's our new leader. Tyler Walker bumped into second place, Pedersen 
of Norway down into third. Uh, the first Dutch para alpine skier to win a world title last year in Servizio. Two more golds there in the slalom and the giant slalom. And he is adding to his reputation. Also from the Netherlands, Nils de Langen. Slalom bronze at the world champs last year. And, uh, yeah, DNF, I'm afraid, for Nils. Oversteering it. Well, it goes without saying, doesn't it? The level of frustration when... Uh, You've been building, you've been training towards that moment and just the slightest miscalculation and uh, he's gone. Andrew Kirker, downhill world champion last year, four world championship medals. But Andrew Kirker won the downhill here in Pyeongchang and silver medalist in the Super G. So from... Three events, two medals so far for Andrew Kirker of the United States. Top go, two times so far, Yaren Kamsha and Tyler Walker. They include two six of a second of each other. But Kirker is quick. We know that. Good technique as well. Kirka coming up to the first intermediate, 17-7-2, oh, just by 900, he's outside it. Can he pick it up? He's certainly got the potential. Broke his back at the age of just 13 in a four-wheel motorbike accident in Alaska. Managed three vertebrae in his spinal cord, and that resulted in partial paraplegia. But he's a fine, fine winter Paralympic athlete here by 0.8. He's still outside that time of Camp Stroh. So he's, uh, he's shaved off the merest margin. Oh, managing to keep it going and crashing through the gate and skiing off. Goodness me, he's done well to keep up right there. He really has. But that is a surprise. Kurka with a DNF. Now then, his rivals... Will count themselves lucky here. He's done really well to stay upright and up on that monoski through the gate, quite literally. But that is a big surprise. So that's one gold medal contender taken out of the equation straight away. Christoph Kunz comes next, a two-time winter Paralympic champion. He won this event in Sochi. He is the defending champion. He won it ahead of Corey Peters and Roman Rabel. Won the Super G World Championship title last year. Also won the downhill in Vancouver. So he is a seasoned Winter Paralympic athlete. But he's outside the time of Cam Shraw by uh, over two seconds. Nearly two and a half seconds, actually. Christoph Kuntz from Switzerland. And those three Winter Paralympic medals. Silver in the Giant Style in Vancouver. Gold in the downhill, Vancouver. And gold in the uh, GS in Sochi. 78.51% factored time. So he's tucking in towards the line, but he's uh, not as good as Cam Schroer. And he goes into seventh place with that time of 110.40. So he's 4.36 seconds away from the time of our leader, Yeron Cam Schroer. Well, Akira Kano is a three-time winter Paralympic gold medalist, five world championship medals as well. From Vancouver to Sochi, he won the Super G on two occasions. Also the downhill in Sochi. Success at the world champs, but not success in 2011. Akira Kano, he's at 32 today.
at 82.64 percentage is factored time. Furacano in the fourth classification of LW11. So that includes athletes who have good stability in the upper trunk but limited control in the lower. Lower level spinal cord injuries is uh, a feature of this sporting classification. Into the drop down, and he's going to be behind here. So Tyler Walker's lead. Well, I think I could tell you, actually, that Yeron Kamsro has been disqualified from this competition. So Tyler Walker is our leader with that mark of 106.30. More information on that. Next down, Rene De Silvestro from Italy. He's 2.22 seconds back here, Rene. So it'll be difficult for him to make this up. Got a wide open competition and an incident field competition here on the slope at the Yongshan Alpine Center. So Tyler Walker reinstalled as our leader at 106.30. Here comes Rene de Silvestro. A, a more than acceptable run from Rene. Eighth best, 4.26 seconds back. Bottom is already preparing itself for the veteran Korean from Seoul, 38 years old now. Rose to glory in 2002, getting a silver medal in the giant slalom. Again, before the reshuffle of classifications. And the first Korean. Alpine skier to win a medal at the Paralympic Winter Games, and this crowd will never ever let him forget it. 110 73. Congratulation. Easy mates here at the Yongshan Alpine Centre. That's a good time right there. Nice. They love him. Natsume from Japan next in line to come down and try and tackle Tyler Walker's time. 3.60 seconds the difference and that huge shock of Camp Sur's disqualification. Is this Tyler Walker's time? Can Jesper Pedersen make it up in the second run? So many things that will remain unanswered until the second part of the competition. Walker's 106-30 won't be contested here by Natsume, the 44-year-old Japanese athlete crosses the line in 11-45. Third games, Frédéric Francois. Oh, and it's... Straight away, disaster for Francois. He isn't out, but that is certainly not the start when you are trying to chase down a quick time. Struggled out of the gate, got held up. It's uh, Francois, 41 years of age. So, yeah. Uh, man from. Uh, Normandy. You can see this is not going to be that bad a time. But the start of that run has cost him big time. 111.19 for Frederic Francois. Might not be another medal to that to ones he's already got. Mm. 
Mura Peli from Switzerland. Suffered a, a broken arm. Just after the turn of the year in competition in Slovenia. He's done pretty well to even be here. To reach the selectors that he would be fit and ready. And that he is. Five years old, Murat Peli. A, a malignant tumour on his spine as a child. Led to his impairment, 113.73. Comes across the line. Down in 15th position. Good right way of Canada. Three year old, and it's uh, turn 34 just before these games. He's enjoyed success already here in Pyeongchang. Another that will fancy his chances. In a competitive field, the sit skiing in the world of para alpine. No six to the zero has gone though. Our close can Oakway get at least try and challenge. 1256, that might just be too much for the Canadian. Skier 23 of 37, Johan. Tabele just out of the medals in this discipline in Sochi. Very, very wide. And, uh, again, you know what you've got to do. You've got to put down a fast time. You know the mark you've got to beat. But Tabele has overcooked it there. And we have another DNF. Plenty of casualties and big names tumbling out of the competition here. None bigger than Yeren Kamshra's disqualification. Uh, also wave goodbye to Andrew Kirker, uh, Gail Kreiser, a previous world champion as well. We hope he's okay, actually. He fell and uh, stretched it off the course. Next down, Nicholas Biska, her son from Chile. Understandably, uh, a negligible Winter Paralympic pedigree from uh, Chile, really, but Biscuit Hudson is here in the start gate, running with an LW10-2 classification. No more minimal trunk stability. It includes athletes with spinal cord injury or spinal bifida. Decent run this though. He's inside two seconds of Tyler Walker's time. Nicola Biscuit Hudson. Final part of the circuit, there's the sweep right, quick left, and now he comes. This is the moment to pick up the speed, drop down par, finish line, here is in sight, and Biscuit Hudson gets there in 109.75. Fifth best time, more than respectable from Nicholas Biscuit Hudson. Ivan Lawler, downhill silver medalist at the World Championships in 2013. Chasing down his United States teammates' time, the first intermediate, that 43 2 4. Well, he's some way off that. To the tune of almost six seconds, Stephen Lawler. Didn't get in the start gate in the giant slalom in Sochi. But he's com been competing at the World Champs in Spain in 2013. But the real standout result was that silver in the downhill in La Molina. And he's some way off the pace here on the frame. Stephen Lawler. Over the line. 117 to 0. Almost the Oh, 
Now we have another veteran from the host nation. This is V.J. Wong. He turned 38 two years ago, so we're into Paralympic birthday boy. A couple of DNFs in the two disciplines he entered in Sochi, the giant slalom and the slalom. Best result in major competitions was a ninth in the uh, slalom competition in La Molina at the World Championships in 2013. But the big memory, I think, for him today will be the roar when he comes over the finish line. Already the uh, flags are, are waving away in, in front of us, in front of the commentary position. Position behind the finish line here at the Johnson Alpine Center, 114-21. 7.91 seconds away from our leading time. So that competition leading score from Tyler Walker remains intact here. Sam. Sam Simon Wallner in Austria. Next down, first major championships. Not within a world, not within a winter Paralympic Simon before. 5.8 seconds off the pace of that intermediate. Love his skiing before his accident, the motorcycle accident in 2011 that Seaman was involved in. It paralyzed him from the chest down. And Walker's time has gone. Slows up a bit. Just make sure he's able to make that left-hand turn and get down the hill. Quickly. Nine seven two away from Tyler Walker. <laughs> Alex Cairns was at the World Championships in his homeland in 2015. He wasn't there in Tavitio last year. First taste of the Winter Paralympic Games. Skier of the Year, four years ago. An honor bestowed on him by the Canadian Association for Disabled Skiing. And it works. Look at the Whistler Ski Resort in British Columbia. He's born with Spina Bifida, Alex Cairns. And he's going to be six seconds, over six seconds, 6.15 away from Tyler Walker here. He goes into 15th place. Next is Mark Sawyer of Australia. No previous Winter Paralympic experience, but he's been to two world champs in Canada and Italy in 2015 and 2017. Best finish, 13th in the giant slalom in Tarvizio. Yeah, a dreadful fall at those world champs last year that required surgery, dislocated his shoulder, broke his collarbone, broke 12 ribs. He ruled him out of action for five months, but he was determined to make the starting gate here in Pyeongchang, and that has indeed happened. So, Mark Sawyer. Thanks running out. And over the line in 116.95. 21st best time so far for Mark Sawyer. Eight to go. Enrique Blante of Argentina here. 19th in the giant slalom in Sochi four years ago. 2.80 seconds behind Tyler Walker at that intermediate checkpoint. Second at a European Cup event and he uh, yielded his first international medal that in uh, France at Praloup last year, but there's not going to be a medal here. Enrique Blante pushing it to the limit but I'm afraid it's uh, another DNF. Still got his fan club though. Seven DNFs all told here. He's having a decent run there as well, Enrique. From Croatia, Dino Sokolovic. It's been going since Vancouver in 2010. 
A lot of Croatian supporters inside this Johnson venue. So he's a popular guy, is Dino. Disqualified from the giant slalom in Vancouver. He's four seconds away from Walker's time. And it came to Sochi, he improved to finish 12th. That was a, a respectable final position for Dino Sokolovic. Croatia's flag bearer during the opening ceremony for Sochi at those Paralympic winters four years ago. So this time of Tyler Walker remaining well protected at the top of our leaderboard. Dino goes 17th. From Germany, Thomas Nolte comes down next. Winter Games. 13th in the Giants Garland in Vancouver. Upgraded to 8th in this event in Sochi. Just outside the medals in Vancouver in the downhill. But he has made the podium in the World Champs. Twice a bronze medalist in the slalom event, Cestria 2011. And the British Columbia, Canada 2015. 2.41 outside Walker's time. So still our American leader remains at the top. Top of the pile here. Coming towards the bottom of the hill is Thomas Nolte. An athlete who was paralyzed in a car accident in 1993. And that resulted in his classification of LW11 here. Second split time and 4.12 away. So it could be a, a top 15 placement here for Thomas Nolte. We shall see. Naturally, he'll want to pick up a bit of extra time here over the final lip, down the final dip. And Thomas Nolte, oh, with the finish line in sight. He was pushing it, but he's overdone it. And that is dreadfully frustrating for Thomas Nolte. He will get a DNF. He's tumbled almost over the finish line there. What is he? Three gates out. That's a shame for Thomas Nolte. It was a decent run. It was a controlled run until that moment. Uh, skis off, and I'm afraid that's his competition done and dusted. From Mexico, this is Ali Aristides Velasquez Penalazona. And uh, no. Well, another DNF. I bet he's got time to get his name out. Again, losing it, just struggling for balance. The DNF's racking up. We know that this giant style of sit ski event is full of thrills and spills. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine DNFs now in this GS event for the men's sit skiers. Four to go. Here's Pavel Bambusek from the Czech Republic. Nineteenth in the downhill. Three years of age. Might delay in the start gate before Pavel can start his first run. Right now, the end of the second run, which will lead to our medalist here in the giant slalom discipline. Had a bad fall when he was only 17. He fell 10 meters from a bridge, and that resulted in his paraplegia. And he's another not to finish here, Pavel Bambosek. It's a choppy journey down the mountain. And he goes the way of uh, Ali Penalatola and Thomas Nolte, Enrique Plante, Yoen Tabale, Andrew Kirker, high profile DNF. 
Niels de Lange and Georg Kweiter spun out Josh Elliott and Taki Mori. And now Pavel Van Busek, our athletes, not to finish their first run and therefore knocked out of this giant slalom competition. Jonas Slivnik will hope for better from Slovenia. Jone, who's not been at a Winter Paralympics before, he's not even been at a World Championship before. He only turned 17 years old in November, so we're going to be seeing a lot more of him. He'll be back. Indeed, he looked at uh, some of the realistic hopes in the, the comments in the athletes' biographies. A good deal of them are looking to 2022 and the next Winter Paralympic Games in Beijing. He's caught the gate and he is another to tumble and stumble and take himself out of contention. Slivnik, yet another not to finish. Well, you have to turn it into a learning experience, don't you? Diego Primero Siguel Moreno from Chile. An ultimate gear out of the gate here in run one of the men's Sitski giant slalom, 4.68. Well, it's been a, a bumpy old ride for the skiers at the bottom of the order here. In the circumstances, just completing a run is a success for Diego here. He's over four seconds back, Diego. Another who's not been to the Winter Paralympics or World Champs before. So talk about in at the deep end here for Diego Seguel Moreno to his flag bearer at the opening ceremony for these Paralympic Winter Games had a snowboarding accident in 2002 which resulted in his paraplegia and Diego pushing on home here for Chile well, we wouldn't necessarily have expected him to get near time all this time. And uh, he's not been able to. Company, hold on for Chile. But over the line, safe and sound. Diego across, here, and it's a 24th place. So the last of our 37 on the start list here will make his first run. Sam Tate from Australia. 11th in the downhill here in Pyeongchang. And 6.64 seconds away from Tyler Walker's time. 106.30, remember, is the quickest time we've seen down the hill so far, set by Tyler Walker. 1.18 better than Pedersen's time with Sikorsky in third at present. Somebody unexpected is going to get amongst the medals here in this giant slalom. For the men in the sitting category, not going to be Sam Tate, but we've seen some high profile casualties in his first run of the men's giant slalom. Andrew Kirker is gone. Yeren Kamsur is gone. Tyler Walker. With that time of 106.30, leads from Jesper Pedersen. So Igor Sikorsky is in provisional time. third place, but it, it may all change when we have the second run. Walker has a lead of 1.18 over Pedersen and 2.39 over Sikorsky. But we're going to see uh, a leaderboard filled with DNFs, including some really surprising names. Andrew Kirker, Yeren Kamstra. He was disqualified. Big surprise here. Over 10 athletes 
leaving the field in the men's sitting giant slalom. That certainly trims down the schedule for the second run. No spectators will rejoin us. The course will be reset. And the sun will just keep getting warmer. Up to 20 degrees here at the Dyeongshan Alpine Center is what we're expecting on day number five. The action is just as hot. Some expected leaders, some unexpected surprises. That is the world of para alpine ski. So a packed schedule here at the Johnson Alpine Centre on the day of the giant slalom for the men and the women here at the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. We're halfway through. No closer to knowing who's going to take off the medals though. So the second runs to come for the men and women in the visually impaired sitting and standing categories. All to play for. The medals will be decided later. Hope you can join us then. Bye for now.